So the types of molecules that these models right now generate, so these are, these are deep learning models that try to learn patterns of molecular structures and understand what molecules typically look like, and then to understand what molecules that achieve a certain property typically look like. But they have their flaws because they don't fully understand what it takes to actually produce those molecules. And if you think about how useful these might be to a chemist who's actually trying to experimentally test what's being proposed, the structures that are generated by these deep learning models might look very unstable, they might be very difficult to synthesize, they might be very expensive, even if they're able to be purchased, and that limits their practical utility for, for real applications in drug discovery. Our solution that we're just starting to work on involves constraining essentially the generation of these molecules to abide by the rules of synthetic chemistry as we know them. So we're trying to change how we do the prediction to not just predict new molecular structures, but predict new synthetic pathways, right? New recipes for making those molecular structures. So that when we have these models propose hypotheses, right, and suggestions for a chemist to test, they're actionable suggestions. They're suggestions where we know exactly what to do when we get to the laboratory. One of the opportunities that this technology offers is to reduce the reliance on human intuition for a lot of discovery tasks. So currently it, it takes a lot of expertise to propose these new structures and to you know, efficiently guide the drug discovery process or propose a new functional material that ends up being validated in the laboratory. And so if we can use these models to formalize that process and codify that process even of how we approach the discovery of these new structures, then we're no longer going to be limited by time availability essentially. And we can free experts in the fields to think about sort of higher level tasks. And so this lets us essentially scale out the discovery process much more efficiently. And it also brings us one step closer to automating the full system. So automating the full process of discovering new structures. Part of what these models rely on and part of what we need to still improve is their ability to understand um, how experimental processes work. If we're asking a model to, to help us plan the synthetic routes to a new chemical structure, it needs to have a good understanding of how molecules react, right, and how different reactant structures can be brought together to form a product. The, the closer that we have these models be able to predict what physically happens, the more useful they will be. Right now, it's, it's very hard to predict the outcome of an experiment, and so even if these models believe that their suggestion is going to work, if they don't have an accurate model of the world, right? if they don't understand what happens when you mix two chemicals together or heat those chemicals, then it's not going to provide very accurate suggestions. And so we, we want to create these sort of computational environments where uh, the model has a good understanding of the behavior of the world and it can, it can quality check essentially what it proposes to chemists because it understands what would happen if you actually tried this physically, not just in silico. One of the other aspects that makes the use of these generative models challenging is that when we think about what makes a drug a good drug or what makes a material a good material, it's usually not just about one property. Right? Certainly for a drug, it's not just about bioactivity, although that's an important component. There are many other factors that influence whether it's going to be successful in clinical trials or whether it's going to be successful commercially. And that connects to the multi-objective nature of these kinds of discovery tasks. Right? It's never just about one property. In trying to optimize multiple properties simultaneously uh, can be a challenge for some of these algorithms right now. There are computational techniques that try to balance these multiple objectives and these competing objectives, but understanding the trade-offs and importance of them in advance is still an, an open question.